Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 27 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Now that we've got our activations and deactivations of our controllers working, we're able to swap between our controllers, I want to add a little bit more functionality to them. Instead of just swapping back and forth, let's um, make the system make, make a little bit more sense. For example, we've got our player, and then we're switching over to our vehicle. In theory, we would want our player driving our vehicle, so we'd probably not want our player to still be standing around the scene. So we're gonna figure out how to get rid of the player from the scene and put them into the vehicle in this video. And we're gonna do all that using our activation and deactivation methods that we created in our controller script, both by modifying them a little bit as well as overriding them inside of some of our specific controllers. So to start this, we're gonna jump to our controller script. And there are two things that we want to do here. The first is that we're going to want to have the player kind of remove itself from the scene when it's no longer an active controller. And this we're going to do inside the controller script because chances are there's going to be vehicles or controllers that you want. That, that This is kind of a question that will come up in a lot of controllers. Do they remain when they are no longer active? So we're going to create a public variable, public boolean actually, right in our controller script, and we're just gonna call this present when inactive. And we're gonna set this equal to true by default, but we'll be able to change it in the inspector because we're making it public. Now, down in our activate method, what we can do is after we've run all of these other um, deactivation and setting the controller in the input manager, and um, setting our camera's activation, we can check if this is something that should be present when inactive. And so we're going to say, if this is not present when inactive, then we're going to want to make it present. And this makes a little bit more sense when we think about deactivate, because likewise here, and I'm going to copy this, this is where it really um, kind of starts is that we're saying if we're not present when we're inactive, then when we deactivate, we need to make that object disappear. Easiest way for us to do that is to say game object dot set active false, and that's going to make that entire game object and all of its children effectively no longer exist in the scene until we reactivate it again. And so then here we can check and see oh if this is currently probably not not present because it's it's not active we need to make it present again so we can say game object dot set active true and so really all this is doing is saying if something should disappear when it's inactive then when we, when we deactivate it it will disappear because we're making the game object inactive and then when we reactivate it that game object gets reactivated as well and it reappears and we're able to control it as normal we can actually jump back over to Unity and check this out right now. We'll notice because we've added this to our controller script, both our vehicle character and our player character, because they're both controllers, get this new Boolean. Now our vehicle is going to be there no matter what. Like we, if we get out of your car, it doesn't disappear. So we're going to keep that as present when inactive. But our player, we're going to make disappear when he's no longer an active controller. We'll apply that to the pre. Yeah, we can apply that to the prefab. This is actually going to do one other thing for us too, which is we never did apply, or at least I never did in these videos, apply the camera addition to our player. So we'll apply that here. And so now whenever we create a player in our scene, we know that they will not be present when inactive. But now when we hit play, we can still walk around our scene as normal, walk over to the vehicle, but then when we hit V and switch to the vehicle, you'll notice the player is no longer appearing here. That's because it's not present when it's inactive. We've deactivated that game object. This is particularly nice because not only is it not visibly there, but that collider isn't there as well, so we're not going to have any weird reactions where suddenly our vehicle is hitting this invisible character. And then when we switch back again, we hit V again, player appears right where we left them. So that works. Now the other side of this is that we may want to, like I say, put the actual player into the vehicle. If you're in something like a tank or something, you're probably not actually going to be able to see the player model, so it doesn't really matter. But for something like this, like a car or something with windows, or if it's a convertible, you'd be able to see the player, and so you probably want to put them in there. 
there's a couple ways you can do this. One would be to actually physically take that player model and put it into the vehicle. The other way is we can just kind of fudge it by creating a dummy model that will appear once the vehicle is being driven. And that's how we're going to do this. It can make it a little bit easier for us. We don't have to worry about manipulating the player beyond what the um, act, or the, sorry, we're going to manipulate the player model. We're not going to have to manipulate the player model while worrying about what the player is um, doing. So this is just going to make it a little bit easier for us. Didn't do a great job of explaining that, but trust me and come along for the ride. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take our player prefab and we're going to drag this from our prefabs folder onto our vehicle character. And that's going to add it as a child to the vehicle character. We see another uh, player model appears right here. I'm going to go in here and we have these three children, the facing sphere, the player hitbox, and the camera. We don't need any of these, so I'm actually going to delete all three. When I delete one of them, it's going to warn me. It's going to break the prefab instance. That's totally okay. Do we wish to continue? Yes, we'll continue. We'll delete that facing sphere. We'll delete the player hitbox and we'll delete the camera. I'm just hitting delete um, while with it selected in the hierarchy. You can also right click on it and hit delete. Now the player itself we want to keep here. However, we are going to remove the walking controller from it. We're also going to remove the rigid body component. And finally, we're going to remove the box collider component. And then finally, I'm going to drag this down about to 0.75, give or take. Um, so it looks like it's kind of sitting in the vehicle now. So this now creates this, the appearance of there being a passenger in the car. Um, it's not going to affect how the vehicle works at all, but it looks a little bit nicer, especially because our player is going to disappear. Now suddenly he's sitting in the vehicle. It makes logical sense within our game space. Now how we make this work within our game, we're going to need to jump into our actual vehicle controller script. I'm going to save this quickly, and I'm going to go over to our model scripts vehicle controls and jump to our vehicle controller script. Have this appear in mono develop. Now in here, after all of our stats, I'm going to create a public game object called passenger model. We'll leave that like that. And this is where we're actually going to put that, that red cube that is our passenger model into this variable, which is going to let us control whether or not it's uh, visible at any given time. Now the other thing we do need to do is jump back over to our controller script for one second because we're not going to be able to override this activate and deactivate um, method unless we make it virtual first. So we're going to add where it says public virtual void for activate as well as for deactivate. We'll save that script and that will now give us the ability to override both of these. So let's jump back over to vehicle controller now at the very bottom of our, of our class here, add some space, and I'm going to say public override. And if you, as you're typing override, you'll see the prompt to um, finish it. Hit enter. Once you hit space, what it does is it actually gives you a list of things that you can override, which is very nice, particularly because what it's going to do is when I click on activate here, double click it, it actually creates the full method with the base activate as a um, kind of filler in there, which we actually want. So that's perfect for us. We're going to keep that as is. I'm going to do that again for the deactivate. So we'll say public override, hit space, double click deactivate. And again, we'll keep that base deactivate because if we jump back over to controller here, all this stuff we still want to happen. We just want to add some more to it. So having that base method in there is still good. Now here, similar to how we were making the player disappear on deactivate and appear on activate, I'm going to do the same thing, but just specifically for that passenger model for the vehicle controller. So after base deactivate, we're going to say passenger model dot set active false, because when we're deactivating, we're no longer driving the vehicle, therefore we're not in the vehicle. So we can empty the vehicle out or make it appear to be so. Likewise for activate, we'll simply say passenger model dot set active true. Then we'll save that class. And now the last, very last thing we need to do, oh, two very last things. So I guess one isn't actually the very last. In our start method, we're also going to want to say up here, passenger model 
dot set active false. And that's just important because if we go to our scene here and we say forgot to do forgot to deactivate this, forgot to deactivate the game object. We don't want there to be this appearance of someone in there when we very start our scene. So we're just gonna make sure we're turning that off right now. But now with all of that done, the only other thing we need to do is go to our vehicle character and drag this, which we really shouldn't call player. We're gonna rename this first. We're gonna rename this to be passenger model. That's a good name for it. And now we'll click on our vehicle character. We have this slot here for our passenger model game object, and we're going to drag that into there. I'm going to apply this all of the, these changes we've made to the vehicle character prefab so that whenever we create a vehicle in a scene, we have all this stuff preset up for us. And now we are ready. I'm going to save the scene to play our scene. And you see that immediately that passenger model disappeared on the vehicle. But we can now walk around as normal and I can walk right up to the car here and now when I hit the V key, which is our um, controller switcher key, the player that was here disappears but now it looks like there's a player in the vehicle which would make perfect sense to, a, uh, to someone playing our game and we can drive around, we can, uh, we can break and then we can still switch out and now we are uh, back to our player. Now it's a little bit odd right now because our player hasn't actually moved. So what would be nice is to eventually create a system where when you deactivate the vehicle, the player kind of gets dropped somewhere in the vicinity of the vehicle. But for right now, we've got this kind of, this a little bit of enhanced activation and deactivation. It's a little bit more logical to our game world. And so what we really want to do um, or focus on in our next video is this idea that instead of simply hitting the V key to switch back and forth wherever we are in the world, it'd be nice if we could actually walk up to the vehicle and once we're in range, interact with that vehicle using our interactable object setup that we have and actually get into the vehicle that way. So that's what we're going to be diving into in the next video in this series is um, making the vehicle an interactable object so that we can start switching controllers through the game world itself rather than just through this kind of static um, kind of manager system. So that's what we'll be getting into in our next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.